The, follow the following interview was conducted with Alejandra Roman, a student at Purdue University for the Purdue University Oral History Program. She's a member of the class candidate for graduation December 2009 the, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, November 6, 2009, Stewart Center. Welcome and good morning, Alejandra. Good morning. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents' in early years, grade school, etc. Okay. Well, I was born in Chicago. Okay. Um, my mom, she's from Texas, and my father's from Mexico. Um, my mom, she worked in a factory for like 20 years and moved around in Chicago a couple times on the, on the north side. Um, what else? Did Okay, that, oh well, and what was great, tell us about grade school. Do, was your father, uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? I, I have one brother and two sisters. Okay. Um, I actually, I have a different father, so they came about 10 to 15 years before me, so I'm the baby of the family. Okay. Um, my father does not live with me. He uh, he left, so I live with my mom. She was a single mom, um, and also with my grandmother. Uh, grade school, I went to St. Thomas of Canterbury. Uh, which is also the parish that we have been, my family has attended since like the 70s. So it was a pretty close-knit family there. Um, are your brothers and your sister, are they older than you? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Did they have the, are you the first person to come to Purdue? Yes, Okay. I'm the first person to um, attend college and actually finish. I've had other cousins who have started college, but they never finished. So I'm, I'm the first grandchild, so that's an accomplishment. Great, great, that's real nice. Mm -hmm. um, how large was the grade school? Um, it was pretty small. Okay. It was probably a total of about 300 students, so okay. was about it, 30 uh, students per uh, class. Through eighth grade? Yes. Okay. It was preschool through eighth grade, and I was there from kindergarten through eighth grade, so. That's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, tell us where you went to high school and some of your clubs and what you did in high school. Okay. I went to St. Ignatius College Prep. Over there, I was involved in the ALAS Club, which is the Association of Latin American Students. Um, I was also involved in the gospel choir for a year, and I think th those were the, the two main things. I okay. wasn't too involved in a lot of things. Right. But what were your, t oh, you were, uh, it was a college prep, was that the kind of program mm -hmm. you took? Uh, it's a college prep, so it was prepping me for college. <laughs> um, it was it was kind of difficult, but it was, it was a much larger school than my grade school, so I think that's kind of what made it so difficult. I was like a little fish in a big sea. So it was a big difference, but it it helped me to transition to Purdue because then it wasn't such a big difference. Right. Well, tell us how you um, decided to come to Purdue. How that came? It's actually a funny story. My Good. best friend from who I went to, uh, to grade school and high school with me from kindergarten, she wanted to apply to Purdue for the pharmacy program, and I had never heard of Purdue before then. So I was like, okay, well, if my best friend is going to apply, I'm going to do it too. And so I applied, and I got accepted, and when I, and I told her, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Purdue, and she's like, oh, I missed the deadline. I'm like, oh, no. But I ended up coming to Purdue anyway, so I, I came by myself. I didn't know anybody. Did you come, did you come down for the day on campus? Yes, yeah, I came down a few times okay. for different things. That right. What about Boiler Gold Rush? Did you participate? Um, in it wasn't the Boiler Gold Rush. Oh. It was a different program oh, right. called SOAR. Right. Okay. I can't remember what it stands for. Like Purdue has so many acronyms. I can't. I know. I know. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> but it had something to do with um, student, like minority students that were going into science majors. And so when I first started, I wanted to do, I believe, like physical therapy. And then after I was in the SOAR program, I figured out I really don't like science that much. <laughs> it wasn't my strongest subject, so I wanted to change out of that. But so I was I was there for the the week of BGR. We participated in um, a lot of activities that they did, but we also had like classes, kind of, to get us get into us the right. role, yeah, right? right. Yeah, get, get us, us in the, gear, right? Yeah, yeah. in the but, system. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, did your friend end up coming? Even no, she missed the app the deadline for the application, so. Oh. Where did she end up finally going to? She went to Xavier University in Louisiana. Oh, okay. And then she got hit by Katrina, by the hurricane that same year, because that was our freshman year. So then she ended up transferring. But She's really had yeah. some, some experience, that's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, when, now, when you when you came on campus, where did you live? Did you live in the I dorm? I lived in the first? dorms. I lived in McCutcheon. Um, I, I really enjoyed living there. I had a lot of fun, maybe a little too much fun. <laughs> But I'm, I met a lot of new people. I think that was one of my goals since I came here by myself. I, cause I'm. Was nobody else from your school came here? No, you were the only one. Yes, oh, I wow. was the only one, so I knew. What was your experience when nobody. you first came? And it must have been hard at the beginning. It was. It was a little. I was a little nervous. I was nervous about meeting new people and having to, you know, 
get a whole new group of friends, but I felt that I needed to move on. I didn't want to go to the school with everybody from my high school, and I wanted to be different and try to find myself, I guess. <laughs> Boiler up, right? Right. So. And I, then, uh, uh, did you live in the dorm just for a couple years, and then you moved off campus? I lived just for, just for one year, and then okay. I moved off campus in okay. an apartment. Okay. You like that a little bit better? Yeah, a little more freedom. That's right. You can come and go. Yeah. yeah. And tell us a little about your course of study um, that you've been with taking at Purdue. Okay. Well, like I said, when I first started, I wanted to do physical therapy. And then, since I didn't like science, I, I but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to go into, so I... They, I declared an undecided major. I went to CCO for a while to take tests and try to figure out you know, my personality and what I would like to do in life and all that. And I figured out that I, my best thing was I wanted to help people. I wanted to go into the human services. And so the, I forget the name of the lady, but she had suggested child development and family studies because that was the whole thing was like youth adult family services. And so I went and talked to an advisor, and I really, I liked the courses and stuff, and so I, I codoed into there. And so I've been in there since, I think, my sophomore year. So majoring in Youth Adult Family Services, um, I've taken a lot of classes about um, family life, family cycle, and child development, and stuff like that. Very good. Mm -hmm. And now we want to uh, want to ask a little about your affiliation and uh, working with the Latino Cultural Center. How that came about? Oh, that, well, I think on the day on campus before I started school, I had came and you know how they have like the tablings and, and stuff. And I uh, saw the, the fair or the information fair. Or yeah, they have an informational fair. It's and a huge crowd. Right. And so I I found the, the LCC, the little booth. I was like, hey, you know, I should go talk to them. And I, I talked, to, I met um, what's her, and Jesse Snazza and forget the other guy's name but the other graduate student and I you know, I really enjoyed talking with them and they're like you should go check out the center and they told us where it was so my mom and I we walked we, we couldn't find it at first because it was all the way on the it's other side it, it was when it was yeah south Before campus King. and so we had walked all the way down and I was like man this seems really far are we going to the right place and then finally we found it and that's when I met Maricela Alvarado and she was she was very nice she was just um, converse, converse with us about everything, was telling us about the different programs and stuff, and my mom and I really liked it. <clears throat> and so she, and then Marisala also told us um, about the work-study position and that how students can work there. And my mom thought it was a good idea for me, so I, when I um, came to Purdue, the first thing I did was I found a Latino Culture Center and filled out an application, and they hired me. So I've been working there since my freshman year, so what sort four of and a half years. What do you, what exactly do you do? Um, it's it's like a And you were there with the old facility and then the new one. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I was it's basically like a receptionist thing kind of I answer the phones, I greet people, I give people tours for the new people. Um, in the old facility it was very, very small. I visited the I was down it's, at the other yeah, one, right. It's it's like a little shack almost. So it was kind of kind of a more cohesive community almost because everybody who came, everybody knew each other and they would just hang out in the lounge and stuff. And then that spring, we were able to move to the new center on um, Russell Street, Russell and Sixth. Mm -hmm. So that was that was very fun because then all the organizations got together to clean out the house and fix it up and it was really fun. I really it's enjoyed that. It's very nice. It really is. Yes, nice. it's a beautiful center. It really is nice. And they had that, I went to the open house that you had this fall, which was, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Um, now, now that you're you're graduating in December, mm -hmm. and tell tell the researchers what you're hoping to do afterwards. Um, I'm currently job hunting. I'm looking for a job in the human services field, so uh, social services or social work in that area. I want to pursue my master's degree, but not not yet because I'm not exactly sure what I want to specialize in. So I want to think I want to have a little more experience before I do that. So. Um, some of the services I'm looking at are Action for Children, um, the Christopher House, Community Alternatives Unlimited. These are just like a few social services for low-income families. Um, so that's that's what my goal is right now. All right. Did, were there any people that uh, came on campus? Have you had any interviews or, or any of the type of things that you'd be interested in they come on campus uh, um, or not? Well, actually for one of my classes right now, mm -hmm. 
it's um, career development, so the teacher has a lot of different people from Come services in. coming in to give us information and stuff. They're mostly from Indiana, and I, I plan to go back to Chicago, so like it, it, it kind of helps, but not really. Like I get the idea of what they do, but then it, you know it varies from state to state, the different programs sure. and stuff, so... But at least you know a little bit about it. And yeah, so I get a general back. idea, yeah. Yeah, so you know what the agency is, <coughs> and they're somewhat similar, I mm -hmm. think, yeah. Now, uh, the award, the Outstanding Latino Student Award, you are the recipient this year, and yes. that's wonderful. Yes. And you were at the uh, the event. Mm -hmm. and the ceremony. Or they called the your name, ceremony. right? Yes. Um, yeah, it was, it was actually a surprise. I got the email from Kimber Nicoletti saying that I was nominated for the award, and I was like, wow. You know, I didn't really, I never thought that I'd be nominated for an award. I didn't realize I had such an impact on the Latino sure, community. Yeah. But I guess after four and a half years of working at the Latino Cultural Center, I guess I do have some <laughs> impact. You've really, you've really enjoyed it. You met a lot of people there, too. Yes, I have. Students and things. And they have, uh, what was one of the, a couple of the activities? Did you like to give the tours or did you <clears throat> some of the other things? The tour, well, at first I was nervous about giving tours. I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's so, ma so much information I have to remember to give to other people. And, like, I hated giving the tours. But after a while, it was like, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> like, people would come in, like, I need a tour. Like, we get a lot of um, students from the Spanish classes that have to come Do in for, for their uh, homework. And so they'll come in, I'm like, oh, no problem. And I just fly right through it. It's like nothing. See how good you are. You right. might be the tour guide. Visitors and Visitors Information Center will be looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you look ahead, now that you're leaving Purdue, you want to make a couple comments? Is there anything special that comes to mind? Um, as you look back and look ahead? Hmm. It's, you, 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 uh, it's worked out nicely for you. And, and you came and to, uh, I think you experienced on how you come, and it's just, it's just been a great a great experience for you, I would yeah, say. It has. I'd say to, to... What did you do during the summer? Did you work in the center during the summer? or did you? I did one time. Oh, did you? For okay. one year. In 2008, I worked because I was taking classes here, so I worked in the summer. Okay. And I also did... We had um, a camp for high school students, seniors in high school, to get them familiar with the college process and stuff, so I was a counselor for that. Oh, it was that's like, good. It was only a couple of days, though. Did they have the camp here on campus? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And did they stay here while they were yeah, here? Yeah, the students stayed in one of the dorms that was right by the Latino Cultural Center. Oh, that's very nice, yeah. But mm -hmm. I'll let you make some anything special that comes to mind. Um, I guess take advantage of the resources. Like, you won't be able to meet people if you don't go actually go to events and take advantage of the resources. Like, all the people at Purdue are here to help the students. And... You just you just have to go ask for it and take advantage. Like freshman year, I was so nervous. I didn't want to. I was so scared to ask for help. And then sophomore and junior year, I'm like, oh, you know, it's they're there. They're, yeah, they're, they're there. Yeah, the teachers, the the staff, the people from the cultural centers, just everybody. That their, their purpose is to help the students. Right, and they're re and they're ready and willing. Exactly. Right. Did you go to any of the athletics? What about football or basketball? Did you go to any of those yeah, games? Yeah, I went to a few games for yeah. football and basketball. That was really fun. Yeah, it's kind of nice. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's camaraderie, as I say to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope that when you, you keep in touch and let us know what uh, happens, we could probably do a follow-up. Who knows, you may be coming back as, as an alum and speaking Maybe. to the people. Yes. I mean, what Hopefully. about your um, uh, other family members? Are they coming to Purdue, do you think? Um, I don't know. I know oh. I have a nephew who's come and visited. He's in seventh grade. He told me that he wants to come to Purdue. I was like, right. yes. Keep nurturing that. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I hope one day, you know, my nieces and nephews, though, That'll if be not nice. Purdue, at least, you know, some college. <laughs> right, exactly. And your uh, family are all coming for commencement? Um, yes. Well, that'll yeah, be nice. We actually have the Latino Cultural Center actually has um, a more informal commencement for the students. And so we can invite a lot more people because, you know, the regular commencement, you only yeah, get but four at least, tickets. At least the December one is not quite as big as the May <coughs> one anyway, right. you know, so that the tickets and things of that sort. And we had to pray for good weather. You never, oh, know, yes, what, you never know. know what December is going to bring. I know. Right. Okay. So. Thank you very Thank much you for very this. Much. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. <laughs>